Hi, everybody. Happy Thursday to you. As we get closer to Easter weekend, I uh, hope you'll be able to join us for the first three parables. Today, we're doing parable number four of the final five. This is the parable of the ten bridesmaids uh, or virgins. Sometimes it's also called the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. This is, this is in Matthew chapter 25, so turn with me to Matthew 25, and I'll be reading the first 13 verses. Again, Jesus speaking this parable. He says, At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise men, wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some of your own. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Well, quite frankly, this parable is very blunt and candid in its truths about how to live in anticipation of Christ's return, because it's about the idea of that very personal responsibility that we all have as how we live in anticipation of the Lord's return. The reason I, I use the word blunt is because of what I consider two details of finality in this parable. Finality, two details that we see here. I'll show them to you in just a second. But before I get to them, I want you to take note that the 10 bridesmaids are the same in every way but one thing. They all have been invited to be a vital part of a wedding. Uh, they all were present with their lamps to meet the bridegroom. Uh, the bridegroom was late for whatever reason. So they all grew tired. The, the detail that separates the wise from the foolish was the oil to keep their lamp lit. The interpretation is that this, of this oil could be that it's our genuine faith, our perseverance, the Holy Spirit, whatever it is that we, we maintain our faith in Christ as we wait for his return. The bottom line is that uh, for the foolish virgins, they, or their oil was empty and they left the party. So let's get back to those two details of finality uh, that I wanted to grab your attention with. The first detail is this, the response of the wise five virgins when the foolish asked for some oil. Their response was a flat out no. They said, go get your own. They said no, that there wouldn't be enough for them uh, and, and the others. I remember when I was younger that this kind of bothered me, that they said no. In my limited understanding at the time, I thought, you know, we're always supposed to share. We're, we're, if we have something, we need to share with others. We share, what we, uh, we, we share with others who have a need. We share our faith. But the lesson here is not about sharing our faith. The lesson here is that as we live and wait for Christ's return, we can share our faith, give a witness, evangelize. However, we must be aware that in no way we compromise our faith. So what do I mean by that? I mean that we need to guard our personal faith to the extent that we may have to say no to others when they ask us to join them, uh, to do something, that, that, uh, uh, that we need to guard our faith and, and that we do not enter into any temptation and enter into any sin, sinful be, behavior. This reminds me of God's instructions to the Israelites as he prepared them for entering the promised land. He said, as you go into this land I am giving you, he said, have nothing to do with the other people that lived in that land. 
had nothing, you know, don't get involved in their worship of their gods. Don't get involved with their altars. He even said, don't marry them. And again, it just speaks to the, that sometimes we have to say no to this world and not compromise our faith. And so there's times and places, and maybe even today, especially we live in circumstances where we have to say no, that's our final answer. The second detail of finality is the words found in verse 10 of Matthew 25. Those words are this, and the door was shut. The door was shut. The bridegroom had come and the, the wise bridesmaids were, they, they were escorted in with the bridegroom and it says for the banquet, the door was shut. Everybody who was supposed to be there and was ready was there and the door was shut. And we, 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 we look at this. Does that sound familiar? The door was shut. Do you remember? Remember what happened after the Lord instructed Noah and his family to enter the ark and that the rain was going to begin to come? When we look back there in Genesis, Genesis chapter 7, that after Noah and his family entered the ark, it says, then the Lord shut him in. The Lord shut him in. The Lord shut the door. That, that, that's a note of finality. That door can't be opened again. It can't be opened by anybody. And the Lord, who is the bridegroom, is the final authority. So where does this parable leave us right now? The door is open right now. Understand that wonderful truth. The door is open right now. The invitation to the Lord's banquet is still available. We are waiting for, the, for Christ to return. We are waiting for his return. And that's what's going to shut the door, his return. Or the other thing that shuts the door is our own death. Again, the finality of death, the finality of the door being shut. And so I ask you simply today, is your lamp burning? Is your faith burning? If not, fan it into flame. Ask the Holy Spirit to just refresh and renew the fire of your faith. Get into God's word. Memorize, study his word. And stay true to the Lord. Because there is a finality to this life. And there is a finality to the eternity that is to come. And we need to know that our response to the Lord must be yes and our response to the world must be no. Will you bow your heads with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you again. We thank you for the promise and the provision of your salvation for us. And we thank you for the assurance that we have of what is to come, that you are coming back for us, that you've prepared a place for us and you're coming back to take us to be with you. Lord, I, help, I ask you to help us. Help us to persevere. Lord, help us to say no to the things of this world. And Lord, help us to always keep our faith on fire. And Lord, that we rely on your Holy Spirit to be that oil, to never let our fire go out. Thank you, Lord, again for all that you provide us. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining with me. We have one more tomorrow as we head into Easter weekend. God bless.